What's up team? This is Testimony Tuesday. And I know we haven't been doing Testimony Tuesday because we haven't been doing, putting out as many videos as we used to. We haven't really been doing Monday through Friday, haven't been doing Testimony Tuesday. We getting back there team, we getting back, we have been busy. But anyway, I want to share a quick testimony with y'all. This is Testimony Tuesday. Had to pull the curtain down, letting too much light in. But anyway, I had this job years ago. Years ago. Really not that many years ago, but years ago. And I, and I mentioned this before in another testimony that on this job, all I did was I would work, run my machine. I was working in a plant factory. I would work, run my machine. And while I was on the machine, God would be speaking to me. I couldn't wait to get the break because I couldn't wait to get back into my word. I mean, God would just be saying so much and showing me so much. And let me tell you something. I know a lot of people say that God don't even speak like that. God didn't even speak to Abraham that much. God spoke to Abraham a lot. And God does speak a lot. Maybe those people was too busy to listen. But let me tell you something. And then also, too, when you say God speaks, God speaks in different ways. God don't just speak in one way. God speaks through signs and wonders. God speaks through impressions, which is also a knowing. God speaks through an audible voice. God speaks through TV. He speaks through people. He speaks through anything he want to speak through. God speaks in many ways. God is always speaking. So anyway, I'll be on the machine and God is speaking to me. And then he revealing stuff in his word. While I'm on the, I'm on the machine, I'm meditating on stuff and it's just unraveling. This is how I spent my day at work. Then when break come, I go shoot over there in the corner, get my Bible, and I get back in the word. I'm eating they in the lunch, they in the break room eating food. I'm in the I'm in the I'm on the floor eating spiritual food. So that that's that's the majority of how I spent my time there. I was just be getting in my word and joining and joining. I was not antisocial. I wasn't antisocial. I, I wouldn't go in the break room at that time, but I used to communicate with the uh people, whether they saints or whether they say whether they were saved or not. I used to communicate with the people, but when it came to break time, break time was me and God. I couldn't wait to go on break. Just for that. Not so I could sit down. Not so I could take a rest from the work. I needed to get back to God. And so working there put me around all types of people. People that, people that go to church but wasn't saved. People that were saved. People that were straight up sinners. People that were straight up atheists, they put me around everybody. But one day, they put a woman next to me from Brooklyn. Now you would think because we from Brooklyn, but that wasn't the case. This woman was hard and harsh and yeah. I, be honest with you. Can I be honest with you, team? I did not like working next to her. Excuse me. I did not like working next to her at all. I'm going to be honest with you. Because she would say anything out of her mouth. She would curse. She would curse people out. She was just stone cold hard. She was straight up Brooklyn. I'm being honest with you. She was straight up Brooklyn. And I didn't want to work next to her. And day in, day out, she would just, she would say anything to me. 
She only seen me one way. Now let me let, let you know, on this job, nobody knew me before salvation. So they only seen me one way. This woman only seen me one way, but she would still get disrespectful. She would say anything out of her mouth to me. This woman was very disrespectful. She was straight up Brooklyn. I, I don't know what else to say. She was, she was Brooklyn. And I'm from Brooklyn. But there was no connection with us. The Brooklyn thing wasn't a strong enough connection. There was no connection with us because my mind frame was one thing and hers was another. So we was not cool at all. But one day, team, now watch God. Watch God when I tell you this. One day, um, she overheard. Now, now she's still working next to me. She, hold up, let me see how much time I got. She overheard some more people talking, some more girls talking about me, right? Now, look how, look at the devil. I'm gonna show you what the devil did. Then I'm gonna tell you what God did. She overheard some girls talking about how they was gonna set me up to see if I would fall. Why? Why would you do that to somebody? Why? So anyway, team, the day came where they did this. Excuse me, did this. I, I, I try not to say stuff like that with a D, that, this, them, stuff like that. The day came where they did this, where they tried this. And this is a short testimony, but... It did not go the way they thought it would go. I didn't fall for the bait. And now, mind you, I didn't know nothing about this. I didn't know they were trying this at all, trying to set me up at all. I just didn't fall. I didn't say fall for it because I was so wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in God. So I did not fall for the bait. Now, I didn't know nothing about this. I didn't know nothing about that plan. Even after they tried to set me up, I didn't know it was a plan. Then the woman that worked next to me from Brooklyn, she came to me. Team, she was crying. Because even though she was not a part of their plan, she heard it. She was right there while they was, while they was putting the plan together. And she felt bad and convicted after she saw how I responded to the plan. And she was crying, team. She was crying. She like, I'm so sorry. I'm so I knew they was gonna do that, but I, I'm so sorry. Team. She wanted me to forgive her. I wasn't mad at her. I wasn't mad at the other girls. But what she said next? I knew this thing, this thing was a setup from God. That's why when the, whenever the enemy is running rampant in your life, he's trying to set you up, he's trying to make you fall, God always has a ram in the bush. While the enemy is working, God is working. And, that, and that's exactly what happened. God was working. Because while this woman was crying and telling me this about this whole setup and stuff, you know what she said to me? She said, you make me a believer. I could turn this off right now. I could turn this off right now. She said to me while crying, you make me a believer. Now this ain't something she just said, because check this out team, this the same woman that worked next to me would say filthy stuff out of her mouth, would say anything to anybody, curse anybody out, was not playing hard from Brooklyn, told me, you make me a believer. That's why you got to watch how you respond. Why? Because somebody else is watching how you respond. She said, you make me a believer. And she didn't just say that team and go on her way. Check this out. I started going out my way to get her for church. She gave her life to the Lord. 
And for a long time, I was going out of my way, another direction, opposite direction, to get her for church. And not only that, she had a husband. Now, check this out. Now, normally, I can tell he the type of guy, he not playing with no man coming to get his wife. But he used to work at the job, too. So he saw how I carried myself and conduct myself the whole time that he used to work there. Because he left there for a better job. He didn't see me up in no women's face. He didn't see me saying nasty stuff and, and just giggling and, and, joke, and, and with the in crowd. When he saw me, when he saw me, he saw me like this. I was in that world. I was in that world. I was in there. When he saw me, he saw me doing that. So he didn't mind me come get his wife. Team, but that, that's the whole testimony right there. She said, you make me a believer. And, and watch this. God used me to turn a stony heart into flesh. Now, when I'm saying God used me, I mean, he did it through me. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I did it. I'm saying that God was going after her and he used me in the midst of that. Watch how you respond because other people are watching how you respond. And we got to always respond in love because that's what the Bible says. If they curse you, you bless them. If they despitefully use you and persecute you, you pray for them. Our response should always be response and love. And, and Jesus also said, if they hate you, do good to them. We don't return hate. We don't curse those that curse us. We don't persecute those that persecute us. Our response should always be love. And I just want to share that testimony with y'all. Because some of y'all are in workplaces right now. And because you're saved, because you're a Christian. And because of the language that go on there. You might not even want to work next to the people you're working next to. And I want to say that maybe God got you next to those people for a reason. Because over the years, I heard so many saints say, yeah, I don't like it. They cursing there. I want to get away from them. But let me tell you something. Some of the places we're going to have to go, they're going to be cursing. And the hedges and highways, they're going to be cursing. Now, let me tell you something. Cursing is not something I want to hear. But I will endure it long enough to win a soul. I will endure it long enough to win a soul. Yes. Yes. So... Come on, we need to come down off that high thing and stop being religious and be soul winners. Let me tell you something. Because you endure it don't mean you have to like it. Come on. Because you endure it. I didn't like working next to that woman. I did not like working next to her. I tell her that today. And to this day, she still honors and respects me. She still holds me high. Because of how I always carried myself. Yeah. And so, I'm about, I'm about to go. I, want, I just wanted to say that to y'all. Because you endure it. Don't mean you have to like it. But endure it long enough to win a soul. Yeah, they cursing. You don't like it. But he said, go into the hedges and highways. And compel them to come in my house. We ought to be soul winners. All of us ought to do the work of an evangelist. He have given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we got to reconcile man back unto him. And, and one more thing I want to say too is this, that the Bible says a city set upon a hill cannot be hid. And that you ought to be a light in a dark place. If you're working around a bunch of sinners, you're the only saint, and you are light in a dark place. You might only be there for one soul, but reach that one soul, and then God will give you the next assignment. All right, with that said, y'all, I'm out. I pray this encourage somebody, because a lot of people are going through on jobs, and... There might be people persecuting you on the job, people attacking you on the job, people that just don't like you on your job. And you're living all you know how to do. And they're cursing, using profanity, talk about sexual stuff, singing five songs. As long 
as you never do what they're doing and never respond the way they're responding, somebody's going to see your light shine. All right, with that said, I'm going. Deuces.